So, what do you see? Um, a ring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cover an eye for me. What changed? Uh, it looked like it got more clear, I think, for me. Okay. Try the other. Uh, it's not there anymore. Okay. So, if she was a left eye amblyope, then I would put the right coit and the left coit up. So I put the coit up that matches the amblyopic channel. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so that if we were doing this and you were really amblyopic, then I would say amblyopic right eye because we weren't using the right coit. Okay. So that if you were an amblyope and I used the right coit or amblyopic with your right eye, what would you expect to see? Yeah, and you're, you're, but as a naive subject, you're going, I don't see it. Really, it's kind of a gray ghosty thing, right? It's not completely gone. But, okay. Then I say, cover an eye. Which eye would you cover? You'd probably cover your good eye. Or no, your cover your bad <laughs> eye, right? And you would go, oh, there's nothing different. Mm -hmm. I say, cover your other eye. Then what would happen? You'd hopefully see some sort of image. Be, image. Well, it'd be really black when you cover, right? <laughs> Just like what you saw. Mm -hmm. There's two, there's the ghost image and the clear image. Mm -hmm. So that with the amblyopic side, if the coit that's up there matches the amblyopic side, the only way to see it dark and clear is with the amblyopic channel. Mm -hmm. Now, by definition, the amblyopic channel can do that. And we use a big target without a lot of detail because amblyopic channels aren't really good at detail. They like big. Mm -hmm. So if you look through the middle, and you're going to get one nice dark one. And your job would be to walk back and forth and keep it nice and dark, even if you have to cover the other one with your hand. Mm -hmm. And you won't have to. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've now got to where you can do that. Now there's a couple of pieces to that. And what you do is, okay, can you keep it? And there's a really important sentence. It says, how long does it stay dark when you move your hand away? So they've agreed when they when they when they say when they answer that it does stay lit up when they take their hand away. And also we're using the bare hand cup with the eyes open, not a patch, because we want them to be in charge of that which they're seeing. I'm turning it on and off. Mm -hmm. And at first you do it with your hand. Then you may do it by spreading your fingers apart. Or you might put one finger in to interfere. Just try putting one finger in and see if you can make it turn off. One finger? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Made it suppress, just that little bit of interference, huh? <laughs> Who's in charge of how you see? Uh, yeah. Isn't that neat? <laughs> okay. So your job would be, if we were doing this for real, is you would be walking back and forth, keeping it, and just give it a try, don't trip over them. Okay. And just keep, look right through the middle of it, like there's an x-ray coming out of your eyes, and look right through the middle and see if it changes, gets darker, lighter, all that sort of thing. Darker one, closer to it. Okay. <laughs> so, even somebody who's, quote, use a little more room, got three or four more steps easy. <laughs> And you want to keep using the space because you're investigating the space and how you use it. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. And it's not just there, is it? Mm -hmm. So even a normie, <laughs> somebody with essentially what the kind of vision we expect, is, is going to, wow, that's kind of neat. Now the other thing you just did is something that all amblyopic and strabismic patients do. He says, well, I now, I've now stopped. I don't have to keep looking. I don't have to have it keep being. So part of the, of the contest is, can you keep your vision dynamic and keep moving the whole time? <laughs> Which is difficult. Yeah. Okay. So you've done that pretty well. I'm going to make a little change. Watching. Mm -hmm. And 
keep moving. <laughs> so where, where we need a sharp stick. <laughs> okay. You have your hands locked together for a reason, no. and, you're, and you're walking on eggs. How, how is this happening to you? Okay. Do they change? Bottom one looks a little bit more blurry um, than the top one to me. Mm -hmm. And can you change that? Are you in charge of it? Um, yes, I can make it more clear if I oh, okay. focus on it more. Well, that's kind of a nice thing. Okay. Now, one of the things that's going on is something called optic flow. Now, you may or may not have learned a lot about optic flow during school, but optic flow is when the things beside you move the other way from you. So that you're moving forward. This, and optic flow is a binocular thing. It's happening in both eyes, and both eyes are seeing it even if you're a dense amblyope. So the movement is critical because it's keeping both eyes awake. So you can control how bright they each one is, right? Yeah. Pretty neat. Somebody's never practiced it before. <laughs> so again, uh, now what do you see? Um, it's a frog kind of jumping, um, but he's like, when I try to focus on it, it like moves a little bit to the side. Co cover one eye. Okay. With my right eye, I just see the frog. No, cover. No, close. <laughs> cover. Say, it's frog on one side, yeah. chain on the other. Yeah. So, again, if you were amblyopic, I'm going to put the high detail frog in front of the amblyopic mm -hmm. channel. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put the low detail, nothing going on, <laughs> for the other channel. And now your job is to walk and keep those both stable and clear while you're walking. As it happens, when they were making these vectograms, they asked me and said, well, what would you like? Is there anything in particular you want? I said, well, I want a figure that will sit right in the middle of the chain or the, uh, in this case, I forget the name of it, but the, uh, and when, that way, when you're walking, you're keeping all this together with how many eyes? Both of them. <laughs> in the same place. Yeah. Isn't that cool? So first was one on the top, one on the bottom. Now it's two together, but they don't really overlap. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nifty? Mm -hmm. Is it getting more stable as you're moving? Um, yes, if I really focus on it, it feels like it's more stable now. Mm -hmm. Now what do we have? Uh, my dark ring. Mm -hmm. Keep looking through the middle. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me anything about where it is? Um, it looks like it's floating towards me. How cool is that? Very. <laughs> so what I want you to do is put my hand under it. There. Holding it. Okay. On me. Okay. So when you back up, what happens? It goes. Further away. <laughs> Further away from Yeah, you? yeah, you'd need to move your hand backwards. Okay. So what's that telling you about you? I'm controlling where it is. Well, <laughs> I'm going to put it there. Okay. okay, now where is it? It looks like it got closer to me. Now. Closer to you. Yeah. Okay. So again, I use words this time, but put my hand right under it. Uh, move your hand a little bit further back and a little bit more. And a little bit this way. What way is that? Uh, towards my right. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then a little bit further back. And it looks like you're right under it. Okay, now back up. Now is it still lined up? Or does it change? Um, it looks like it's still kind of lined up. It's okay. maybe a little bit in front of you now. Oh, so it's moved towards you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is it bigger or smaller than it was? I think it got smaller. You're looking at it. I, I, can't I think see it got it. smaller. Okay. Okay, now, so 
pay attention to that. I'm going to leave my hand here and walk back and forth. Notice how you, you quit moving to try and evaluate yeah. it? But it's easier to see when you're moving, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, how, how cool is that? Yeah. That's why we have you move, because you can see better. Mm -hmm. How neat is that?